What's up, card family? Hope everybody is doing awesome. I uh, wanted to make this special video showing off just one autograph out of my Twins PC. And it's one that I think is really cool. And I hope you'll stick around and listen to the story that I have to tell. And uh, maybe you'll think this is autograph is pretty cool too. It's of a player that I guarantee you, you probably never heard of. Um, unless uh, you're a fan of the Twins and Twins history uh, in particular, then possibly you've heard of him. But this is an autograph on an index card of Mr. Fred Bruckbauer. And there's a reason why it's on an index card, because uh, Fred Bruckbauer only played one game for the Twins, uh, one game in the Major Leagues period, and uh, he didn't have any cards uh, made of him, so... I was able to get this. He passed away in, I believe, 2007. And uh, I was able to get this uh, index card on eBay. And so uh, I've been debating about getting this one slabbed. Maybe uh, in December I'll send it off when Garrett does a, a, a service for all items. Uh, probably... I don't know. I've had it for a long time. I'm not sure if I'll send it off or not. But anyway, I think it's a, a pretty cool uh, autograph. Uh, played uh, for the 61 Twins, their inaugural season. Uh, and uh, he is a Minnesota native, so that makes it a little bit more special to me. And uh, so now I'll tell you the story of Fred, Fred Bruckbauer. Frederick John Bruckbauer was born on May 27, 1938, in New Ulm, Minnesota, to Wendelin and Dolores Bruckbauer. He grew up in the nearby town of Sleepy Eye, where his father worked as a watchmaker at the family jewelry store. Fred attended St. Mary's Catholic School and was a gifted athlete. He was co-captain of the football team and an all-conference and all-region basketball player. But it was on the baseball diamond where he made his biggest mark. In four years of varsity ball, the crafty right-hander led the St. Mary's Knights to three conference championships and three trips to the state tournament from 1954 through 56. Bruckbauer relied on his curveball and particularly his brilliant ability to change speeds. During the summers, the teenage Bruckbauer played semi-pro town ball against former minor and major leaguers. After high school, Fred was given a baseball scholarship to the University of Minnesota. There he pitched under the guidance of legendary baseball coach and former all-star major leaguer Dick Siebert. Fred's parents would drive up to Minneapolis to watch their son pitch. Sometimes Dolores stayed in the car, too nervous to watch, listening to the game on the radio. In his two seasons with the Golden Gophers, Bruck Bauer went 15-3, as the team won consecutive Big Ten titles in 1958 and in 59. He was named All-Big Ten and All-American pitcher, and he brought the attention of many a Major League scouts. The 21-year-old Bruckbauer signed a $30,000 contract with the Washington Senators. In his first year in the minors in 1959, he led the 3-I League in shutouts and was named the league's Rookie of the Year. That winter, he married his high school sweetheart, Kathy. Life was good. The sky was the limit. In 1960, Fred was awarded a spot on the Senators' 40-man roster among a core of young hurlers that included Jim Cott and Jack Kralick. That spring, manager Cookie Lavaghetto was smitten with Brooke Bauer's potential and named him the Senators' fifth starter. Just before the start of the season, Bruckbauer hurt his shoulder in a game against the Braves. Just a small tug. I don't remember hurting it, he said, but my fastball was more or less gone. Instead of making the bigs, Bruckbauer was sent to Class A. Suddenly, Fred's curveball wasn't as snappy, and his fastball wasn't as fast, and without a fastball, his great changeup was rendered useless. Once a specialist in control, he started to walk more batters and he missed more games due to pain. 
cortisone shots became a part of Buck Bauer's routine. Regardless of his struggles, in February 1961, the Sporting News named Buck Bauer among a promising group of young players to watch that included Carl Yastrzemski and Billy Williams. With the Senators moving to Minnesota, Fred now had a chance to play Major League Baseball in his home state. Buck Bauer pitched well enough that that spring to earn a spot on the opening day roster. On April 25, 1961, Fred Bruckbauer made his Major League debut in relief against the Athletics in Kansas City's Municipal Stadium. It was one of the first ever televised Twins games, and kids, parents, and former teammates of Fred gathered around their black and white TV sets to see if their old buddy would get a chance. With the ten Twins down 7-2, to they gave the ball to Fred. Dick Hauser, the first batter Fred faced, smoked a double. Then Jay Hankins hit a single. Bruck Bauer walked Jerry Lumpy, and finally surrendered a double to Lou Klimchuk. He was replaced by Chuck Stobbs after giving up three runs and not recording an out. That was it. He never pitched in the major leagues again. Fred kicked around the minors for a little while, but could never regain his pitching. Back then, there were no modern surgical techniques that could save his arm. The amount of cortisone shots Fred received left a permanent welt on his shoulder. The twins were so desperate to get a return on their investment that they even had his tonsils removed, based upon questionable advice from one doctor. After a while, Fred returned to Sleepy Eye with his wife, Kathy. He finished his degree at Mankato State and taught, a, taught for a year in Mankato. Then he was offered a job from the John Deere Company and worked for them for nearly 40 years. Fred and Kathy raised four children. Fred died in 2007 and Kathy in 2016. Fred's obituary said, Fred was a man of few words, but you couldn't know him without becoming his friend. He had a keen mind and a contagious spirit. His son Terry said, Dad never let things bother him much. That's probably what made him such a good pitcher. He could always move on. An engraved plaque commemorating Fred Bruckbauer was installed on the grandstand at Sleepy High Ballpark in 2017. Fred was the first native Minnesotan to pitch for the Twins. He faced four batters, pitched zero innings, allowed three hits, three runs, one walk, and zero strikeouts. But those numbers don't tell Fred's story.